you've ever had a deja vu moment? Oh, I'm having one right now, standing here up here, just reflecting on the many great experiences that I've had in the meetings world. And one of my best moments was actually being out there, doing what you do. Looking from this view, it is incredible. You have to be very proud of all the accomplishments and to be in this type of business. But yet I also know it is not easy. It is a very tough industry, too. As a matter of fact, it was surveyed, as may, many of you may have read before, from Edelman Intelligence, and they just released the top 10 most stressful jobs in 2018. For the third year in a row, in the same order, here are the top five. Number one, military personnel. Number two, fighter fighters. Number three, airline pilots. Number four, police officers. And number five, meeting and event professionals. Oh, wonder we party so much. And that stress can be so simple as constant interruption, 24-7 connectivity, client company demands, uh, work overload, trying to be deadline constraints, balancing work and family life. Well, let me put it this way. As the female version of the comedian Jeff Foxworthy in his redneck style, I'm sure you can relate, and if so, please join in. If you smile and say good morning to a total stranger in the street while still wearing your name badge, you might be a meeting professional. <laughs> if you can't help but think of a, site uh, a vacation as a site inspection, you might be a meeting professional. If you get a twitch in your eye when someone says the word wedding, you might be a meeting professional. If someone asks you, what's your budget, you say, budget? I have no stinking budget. You might be a meeting professional. And if you're confused when an attendee asks you, what time is the noon lunch? Is the cash bar free? You might be a meeting professional. And if someone complains that the room is too cold and you turn it colder, you might be a meeting professional. Do we have meeting and event professionals in the house? Yes or yes? Well, here's the truth. The meetings world has changed again. But this time, we're not just about hospitality. We're not just a small community. We're on a global basis. And we've got generations entering this world, and they have a choice of where they want to hang. You've got product and service excitement accelerating and amplifying. You've got consumers expressing themselves more than ever. And you've got technology and online shopping as the norm. And all you want to do is outsmart, outmaneuver others so that you own that space. Yes or yes? Well, that's not going to happen. Unless, unless you realize that making a difference while working and living in the fast lane is not just about, uh, uh, you know, making amazing, having amazing meetings that are memorable. You already do that. It's not just about making 20 sales calls or sending out 10 RFPs. You already do that. You already do an amazing job. The reality is, is that not every day is a good day. We heard this from my fabulous friend yesterday, Judy. Stress is in the industry. And that stress makes up what happens every single day that we, what we do in our life. I mean, how many of you have a bad day? Yeah? Nobody has a bad day in here? Hello? Come on, let's be honest. Yeah, we do, right? And that bad day can be something that you, you can leave at the office, or maybe you take it home to your family to hear about, or maybe some of you grab a six-pack of beer. We all have to deal with it. But what if you were able to control that stress or have less stress than ever before so that you can own the, the, the job that you're in and really enjoy it and the meetings industry once and for all? Would you like that? Let me tell you how. It's called... Resilience. The ability to actually take a situation, a challenge, or, or an issue, and not only solve it and answer to it, but recover from it and learn from it. Really taking the time to know that you don't have to, you, you, can, you can get it done. You, can, you don't have to quit. You can not only just be knocked down and get up, but when you get up, you're stronger than ever before. This is what we want to have happen to you to make a difference by being resilient. And down the line in the future, when you look back and reflect on the meetings industry like I'm doing now, you'll be able to really answer those questions that people say, what was it that you did for a living? And if someone asked you, 
What was that turning point? I want you to say, it was May 24th, 2018. It's a smart meetings, West National, in Arizona. I don't remember the speaker. She wasn't impressive. But I remember thinking what I needed to do to really make a difference in this industry, to make that big impact. And then everything changed. So, are you ready to play and have fun? Yes or yes? Good, good, good. Because uh, unless you want to talk about sports or recipes, this is all I know to talk about. In other words, you have handouts there in front of you if you want to follow along and fill in the blank. Because uh, I know everybody has their own learning abilities. We're going we're gonna to see what we can get accomplished here in a very short period of time. So, let's start with the first one. Because I know how important it is for us to figure things out. Figure things out no matter what, each and every day. And to do this, there's three things that you have to do that, that you, when you do it, this is what happens. So we're going to celebrate you making a difference by being resilient. Here's the three things that happen. First of all, it defines you. It defines you so that you and, and, the, and the value that you bring to the table as a meeting professional, your wisdom, your ethics, your behavior, your attitude, and also having to follow the golden rule, treat others like you want to be treated. Two, it renews you so that you can take on new roles and responsibilities in order to enhance your career once and for all. And three, it empowers you. It empowers you when, you when you really be resilient about things, so that way, you know, you can actually put your ideas into action, so that you can stand up for this industry where we all love to work and play in, and also to embrace the fact that we can't change what goes on around us until we change what goes within us, one loud, powerful voice. So these are the three areas we're going to cover right now. So we'll start with the first one. It defines you. See, I'm a big believer that 95% of the time, we all in this room are competing for the same thing. Attention, right? To rise above all the clutter in order to be noticed. I mean, for example, does this guy want to be noticed? I hate when my priest does that. <laughs> I mean, think about it. In the meetings industry, we always want to be noticed. This is why we do trade shows. This is why we go to conferences. This is why we are meeting here today and tomorrow. This is really important to us to try to do the best we can to put our products and services in front of people so that we can create also ma amazing meetings for others. Um, and, and not only our professional life, but our personal life, too. Think about it. We're coming up to Memorial Weekend, and you're probably going to be getting together with your friends and your family for maybe a barbecue, or, or maybe they're coming to stay with you. And what's the first thing you do? You give them a site tour. You put an amenity on the side of their bed, right? And some of you go as far as folding the first sheet of toilet paper in a... <laughs> just to be noticed. But what about the other 5%? The other 5% where you work so hard and being stressed along the way, where's the payoff, right? What is the payoff? You deserve that payoff. But yet you have to define yourself to know the difference in order to receive that, to, to that, go, to that go to that goal. And you can do this in many, many different ways to find out who you really are in this industry. Because as you go through this industry, trust me, after being in it for 30 years, you change. Things change. And Michael Domingo said that today. Things have changed, and we need to learn how to adapt to it. And you change. So defining you is very important of who you are today. You'll be different maybe tomorrow, but always defining yourself. And you know there's multiple ways of doing it, but the first place you want to probably look is probably in here your cell phone, right? A lot tells about you in this cell phone, this little, little gadget. So let me, t let me see. As a matter of fact, why don't you get your phones out? Everybody get your phones out. Oh, I'm sorry. It's already a surprise. It's already on your tables, isn't it? Go figure. Everybody get your cell phone out. Hold it up. Get your phone out. Oh, love it. I feel like a concert. Woo. Yeah, very cool. All right. Got your phones out, everybody? All right. Oh, this is what I want you to do. I want you to pass it to the person next to you. 
too much fun on this, right? <laughs> what does this tell you about it? Your cell phone, somebody else, if they can get into it, they can find out your behavior, your thoughts, your actions of what you've been doing when you're on social media, the emails that you've sent, right? It tells a lot about you, doesn't it, today? That's part of the change. And if they define who you are, could they find out everything about you? Maybe they can. All right, do you want your phones back? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> it's scary, isn't it? But there's other ways as well. You know, I came across this not too long ago of who was able to actually not only make a difference, but they were so resilient about it that it defined her. And it happened right here in this industry. Let me ask you this. How many of you have kids? I've never seen a kid before. Some of you parents are going, oh, I'm too exhausted to raise my hand, right? Oh, well, my husband Jerry and I, we don't have kids. As a matter of fact, a good friend of mine says, Deborah, you're child-free, not childless. And those that have children are child-blessed unless they have a four-year-old or teenager. Is that true? Well, anyway, we did adopt. Yes, I am a mommy, and I am not bragging whatsoever, and I'm not being biased, but I have the cutest eight-year-old boy. And he's furry. He's got paws. <laughs> he's the one on the bottom. And just and his name's Chief, because, you know, like kids, they're the chief of the house. He's the chief of the house. And so a couple months ago, uh, my husband and I, we actually celebrated our 15th wedding anniversary. Yeah, that's sweet. In wife terms, that's 145 years, just so you know. But unfortunately, what I did was I actually um, booked myself a speaking engagement in Seattle over our dates. What do we call that, suppliers? Double booking? Yeah, I did that. I did that. Um, and, but my client was really nice about it. She said, you know what, Deborah? Here's an idea. Why don't you and Jerry come in a, a couple days before, enjoy the sights. We'll put you up at the Fairmont Olympic Hotel, and you can just, you know, be, just have a great time beforehand. I thought that was a great idea. But to run that by Jerry, who never travels without chief, I knew would be tough. But the good news is, before you know it, we were flying to Seattle. The bad news is that Jerry cried the entire flight. So I cried. The guy in the window seat, he was crying. But by the time we got to the hotel, we walked in. And I don't know about you when you travel. When you travel by yourself, it's so nice when you get a really nice room. And then when you travel with your friends and family, you get the rooftop view. Well, this time, we got a really nice room. But when we walked in to help us celebrate our anniversary, something very special hit. And you would think it would be an amenity, right, of chocolates, strawberries, and champagne right there on the coffee table. But instead, we got this. Oh. I know we cried again. <laughs> but we had a great time for the entire weekend. All three of us had a wonderful time together. The hotel salesperson that did this, her name is Sarah Carter. Sarah Carter not only made a difference by upgrading us to a nice room and an amenity, but she was resilient to try something new and different. She wasn't going to stop there. She came up with this beautiful idea of bringing our baby boy with us, too. I don't know. I think she got it off of Facebook when he was younger. Sarah and I have not even met yet. But yet, we've talked. We're on social media together. But what was great is that she made such an impact. She went a little extra mile, and because of what happened, making sure that we had a good time, her stress level went down. 
because she knew she made somebody very happy. And because of it, because of it, now I don't travel anywhere without Chief. What about you? What about you? What is it that you can do that makes that difference while working and living in the fast lane? Because you might as well. We're doing it all together. We're in it together. So why not find that out? So here's what I'd like for you to do right now. I want you to get your phones out again. Right now. Get your phone out. I want you to go to the album section. All right? The album section. I want you to start scrolling through it right now. And I want you to actually look at it. And I want you to share your story with somebody next to you. And here's what we're going to do. If you want to get up, you're more than welcome to because we're here to network. If so, I want you to meet somebody you haven't met yet. I want you to target them, introduce yourself, give them your business card because you know you want to. And in 60 seconds, that's all you have. 60 seconds because you know Marin mentioned I'm a Marine brat. I'm on time. So let's go with that. Let's see if you can share a story that you made a difference because you were being resilient. And then we're going to come back and we're going to hear some of these. All right? Are you ready? 60 seconds. Ready? Go. But just understanding how you can define yourself just by making a difference. And again, yes, we are stressed in this industry, but you can have less stress knowing that it pays off in the end. And it's just a matter of being as much as resilient as possible. And when this is completed, then what you can do is move to the second stage, which is that it renews you. It renews you. And when you are renewed in this sense, it actually allows you to take on more roles and responsibilities. Maybe even get that promotion that you wanted because you're going to be ready for it. And this is the part where you need to adapt to the change level. And we need to do a lot of changing in this industry, don't we? A lot of, a lot of it we need to because, you know, since the 1980s, we actually have had conferences that have been built on the model of having excellent speakers, uh, great networking, split productions, amazing closing parties, and, and music and, and entertainment. The challenge today is that the Internet, technology, mobile phones have disrupted that model. What meetings and event professionals thought was considered experience is now portable, affordable, and everywhere. It's as if Airbnb and Uber got together and said, hey, let's brainstorm how we can disrupt the meetings industry. And they succeeded, right? We see this happening. So we have to do better at what we're doing. So we don't want to be stuck in the 1980s, unless you weren't born yet, then I despise you. <laughs> But it's time for us to make some changes. You saw it in the royal wedding. You saw the changes coming there from the tradition to conventional. Our industry can do that, too, more than ever. And, it, and it's all about, you know, especially looking back at the way things have been and what we can do to creatively move forward. Since 1960s, when Elvis Presley was alive, there were four Elvis impersonators. By the 70s, there were 1,200. By the 80s, there were 2,400. By the 90s, there were 17,000. Today, there are 48,000 Elvis impersonators. They said if that trend continues, there will be one in four people that will become Elvis impersonators. <laughs> will it be you? Will it be you? I hope not. Right? So change is what we have to do. We have to adapt to it than ever before. And, and I see it in our industry. We have the same websites. We have the same proposal templates. We have the same RFP proposal templates. I mean, we're, we're, we're following. The last thing you want to do is follow somebody. And we can sit here and talk about how to, but the one thing we have to do is we have to stop doing what other people are doing in the industry. Maybe looking outside the industry and trying something new and different. You have the permission to do this. And, and it's something even as simple as technology. You know, it's great to know the latest and greatest of technology. There's no doubt about it. But I want to talk about this because in my view, in my view, there are two of the greatest inventions in the hospitality industry. One. The chicken menu, for, for sure. Whoever came up with that one, bravo. Two, technology. 
And I don't know about you, but I have a love-hate relationship with technology. If I come up with one more username and password, I'm going to throw up. You know, and, and yes, it's great for use. We know it, what it does for us. But do we have to really do everything that it does? We have to take control of this. It's great to know about it, but do we have to do all of that? Because here's the real question you have to ask yourself. Do we really need to do what we can with it? Or do, is it the answer to everything? I don't know. Take a look and you decide. So what we need to do is we need to take control. And the best way to do that in order to help de-stress is to really stay on track with your goals and objectives. Your goals and objectives, just stick with that. And you'll see, because here's the thing we have to be very careful about, is not only are you stressed, but all those that you work with, your customers, your attendees, can be stressed too. ClickShare, the wireless uh, presentation system, reported that 9 out of 10 people are tech-related stressed. And it's all as, as simple as trying to sign into something, if they're trying to sign into something, and they can't do that into an app or, or another area of the technology, their blood pressure increases to, uh, to 60%. So look what we're doing to other people, especially your attendees. Think about it. Your attendees, when they find out that they're coming to a conference or to a meeting, what's the first thing they do? They let their friends and family know about it weeks in advance, maybe months. And the night before, what do they do? They're at the office late, doing emails, getting rid of paperwork. Then they go to, to the airport, their flight's delayed. Then they go to the hotel, their room's not available. Then they go to registration, they can't find their badge. This is all happening before they see you. So we have to be careful in selecting things that we have them do. And it all starts with you. All starts with you. So what's the best thing you can do? Well. The best thing is let technology take care of the left brain. You take care of the right brain. This side is the creative side. You have the permission to utilize creative ideas and utilize them. You know, the big uh, travel in the media industry found its biggest purpose in 2017. This year, 2018, this is the age of the experimental format, meaning you can try anything you want. We can do this. As you know, Michael said it earlier, we are stable and we are healthy. So let's start taking some risks. And it can be something as simple as changing the boring meeting name. American Medical Meeting 2018. <laughs> Shake it up. Shake it up like your salad. Shake it up like a snow globe, and that's not an iPhone app. You just shake it up. Start trying something new and different. And you have the permission to do that. So now, here's what we're going to do. I want you to think about an idea that you would like to do. Or maybe you did, and it's successful, and you know nobody else is doing it. Or maybe it's an idea that you've always wanted to try it, but you're afraid, or that it never was approved before. What is that? What is that? Think about this. And here's what we're going to do. Now I want you to turn to the other person you're sitting with, or across the table, and I want you to introduce yourself again. Give them your business card again, because I know you want to. And for 60 seconds, share that idea. Share that idea. And let's hear some of these brilliant ideas, because we are about inspiring brilliant experiences. Ready? 60 seconds. Go. What are some of those ideas? Let's share them. Let's find, let's uncover what those are. You know, you saw the display today of the salad. I thought that was brilliant. I thought that was brilliant. Okay, so who's got some ideas to share? Okay, good. There's one. Don't forget to, you get to introduce yourself. Woohoo! Gwen Henson from Tempe, Arizona. All right. Um, so I'm a little different than some of you guys. I have a smaller group. We only had about 100 people this year at our conference, and we went to Cleveland, which has the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So we went totally with the rock theme. And our conference was called, because my group is Indexers, my, our conference was called Indexers Rock. And we promoted it on social media for months. And then I took blow-up guitars with me and handed them to them when they got there. I took pictures and put those on social media because my group's really introverted. And I was trying to get them to be more extroverted. So we did Indexers Rock. We toured the rock hall, and we had really had a fun time. Nice. Beautiful. Give her a hand. There you go. Who else? Okay, who else? Who else? Come on. Don't be shy. 
Come on, we've got some books to give away. It's all good. Okay, let's do it. Come on, we need at least one more. One more. Ooh, come on, be brave. We're not going to... There you go. Good. All right, here we go. Good, good, good. Eric Hutchins, Salon Associates. I'd like to see every meeting with 25 people or more include a CSR project of some sort. Could take 10 minutes, could take an hour. Nice. Yeah. There's tons of ideas out there, and I know your wheels are probably turning, but we need to take this a whole different step. You know, I was talking to the banquet manager beforehand, uh, Deborah, and I loved what she said. I said, so are you going to have a number underneath the chair so somebody gets the centerpiece? She goes, oh, no, that's so the 80s. And I thought, yeah, she gets it. She totally gets it. We all need to get it because the, the permission to have creativity is here. This is the time we need to take advantage of it. And then once you do, then what does it do? It empowers you. It totally empowers you. Taking those ideas and putting them into action. And when you go back to the office or back to another site inspection or whatever that might look like, think about the ideas that you want to put in action. And that could be stressful. Uh, no doubt, that could be stressful because you got to know the to how-tos and everything like that. But really, it's not as bad as you think it can be, as long as you streamline it. What is streamlining? Okay, here's a new term for you. Streamlining is a focus path that is created through a flow of movement where there's least resistance. And so, where does this happen? Well, it happens in what is called the sport of swimming. As you know, Marin mentioned, I do a lot of competitive swimming. And swimming, see, in the sport of swimming, there's over 660,000 gallons of water in a 50-meter Olympic-sized pool. If you watch the Summer Olympics and the swimming event, that is a 50-meter Olympic-sized pool. And my goal is to be as aerodynamic, in control, with little resistance, in order to increase my speed. And that is called streamlining. And what's happened in the sport of swimming is that they've caught on to this. It's, they took the study from dolphins. If you ever watch dolphins, how they're beautifully, uh, just how they swim in and out of the water. But yet, the study now is watching them underwater to where they find these air pockets where it's least resistant and they go three times faster. So the swimming world is doing this too. For example, I don't know where that video Same went. There it is. Final. If you look at lane seven, this is Hill Tyler, a friend of mine. This is a 50 meter backstroke. He's actually going to streamline the entire process here. And you can see how different that is when people are swimming on top of the water, as a matter of fact. Yes, do you have to hold your breath? Absolutely. <laughs> a long way. But this is something you're going to see in the near future. Not only did he win this race, well, actually, he was disqualified because today you can only go 15 meters. But, but he, he went three seconds faster than all the rest of them. And that's huge in the sport of swimming. Huge in the sport of swimming. And we don't only just teach it and at all different levels, but you can teach it as well because this is also something you can do in the business world. In the business world, it's the same thing. It's about getting to the point, getting to the goal, getting to uh, whatever the results or goals are in a very fast, efficient, effective way, whether it affects your job or your bottom line. And it doesn't just stay within a department. It doesn't stay within just you or a position. It's for everybody. And so in the sport of swimming, we teach senior folks how to do it, even little kids how to streamline. And now I want to teach you how to do it. We're going to take the time to do this. So now everybody stand up. We're going to take a seventh inning stretch. I want you to put your feet shoulder length apart. Shoulder length apart. And in the sport of how many of you swim or know somebody that swims? Yeah, right? What's then the first thing you do? You put your fingers together so the water doesn't go through, right? So everybody put your fingers together and put it up to your side. Everybody stand up straight, nice and tall. I want you to bend your elbows at a 45 degree angle together, parallel together. It kind of looks like this. Okay, see, I have thought this through, by the way. And why are we doing this? Because this is fun. And plus, it's the only thing I've got. Um, so now what I wanted you to do is very slowly, not hurt yourself, I want you to raise your arms up to the ceiling, and then I want you to put your hands together. Some of you can look at it as a crane, or some of you can be as flexible putting your hands on, on top of each other. 
And on the count of three, I want you to lift your elbows up to the ceiling without hurting yourself, okay? Are you ready? And make sure you keep breathing. Ready? One, two, three. Hold it. Oh, you have no idea how much I want to tickle you all right now. Oh, my God. Okay, on the count of three, let's come back down nice and easy. Ready? One, two, three. Shake it out. How did that feel? Give yourself a hand. Woo! So, didn't that feel good afterward? By streamlining, taking the time, going through your processes instead of rushing through things. Because when we rush through things, stress applies much more. So let's make sure that we take time to streamline. So what does this prove? This actually proves slow down to speed up. Slow down to speed up. And there's one area in the hospitality industry I see where we can do this too. Let me ask you this. What is the number one concern in the hospitality industry right now? What is it? What is it? Yeah, what else? There's something bigger. Keep going. What is it? Yes. Safety and security. That is the number one issue right now. You know, here in Arizona, our safety and security concern is immigration and the wall and how it's going to be built and how expensive is it going to be. But, you know, thinking like a meeting professional, I'm thinking, that's easy, pipe and drape. Why not, right? Okay, that was a bad example. But here's a great example. Here's a great example. See, here's the thing about safety and security. Our companies and organizations have risk management plans, policies in place. But you, what are you doing about this? Because it's not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's a matter of when it's going to happen. And when it does, you're in that role and that responsibility to do something about it. So what are some of the things that you can do? Well, have scenario drills. Take some, try some scenario drills. And, and let me show you what I'm talking about, first of all. Right now, I want everyone in here, close your eyes. Close your eyes and tell me out loud, how many exit doors are in here? How many house phones are in here? How many windows are in here? Ah, that was a trick question. Just want to make sure you're paying attention. <laughs> so think about this. When you walk into a building or a venue or an area, are you looking around? Is your team seeing what is going on around? Because when something happens, you have to respond. You have to respond. Definitely. So here's another idea. What if, what if Debbie right here in the front was actually all of a sudden started choking? Choking really choking because she was laughing at his jokes and she started choking frantically to where she was ready to pass out. What would you do? What would you do? What are some of the things that you can do? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, right. Call 911, right. But what if, what if you took it upon yourself to get your CPR certification and start with that? How many of you have your CPR certification? <gasps> Congratulations. Okay, which means the rest of you don't. Okay, neither do I. But I should. I need to fix that. So as simple as your CPR, and you know you can get it online now from the Red Cross. You can take that time. You can streamline and take that time to try saving someone's life. So remember, what are you doing with the number one concern in the industry. Very, very important. So what does this all mean too? This all definitely means that we need to take a stand in everything that we do. Why? Because we need to empower ourselves. We need to empower ourselves. It's our role. It's our responsibility. Because not too many people still know about the industry. We're still very unnoticed. You know, we're larger than the automobile industry, and we never ask for a bailout. But yet, people still don't know who we are. How many of your friends and family still know what they know what you do? Right? No, they don't. We need to take a better stand in this area. You know, a couple months ago, um, I was actually at a program 
speaking. And when I got back, I felt like I was Sally Field, just winning the Oscar when she said, they love me, they love me. I came back and I said to my husband, Jerry, I said, you're not going to believe this, but I loved this group. I had so much fun. They loved me. And he said, oh, okay, good. Let's make dinner. I said, no, you don't understand. I really had a great time. They love me. I love them. And he's like, okay, great. Let's make dinner. And I said, no, the best part, I have to tell you, and even though it was a training session, they gave me a standing ovation. And he jumps off the couch. He says, okay, let's make dinner. Okay, let's make dinner. They don't know what we do, do they? They don't get it. So we have to try harder. We have to try harder. And you know, there's one community that actually does do a great job of this, and that's the traffic and safety community. They do a great job of this. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if the traffic and safety community can do it, why can't we, right? They're keeping their people safe so they don't die. So what do we need to do as an industry? There's a lot of things we need to do. As a matter of fact, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Meetings Mean Business. Are you an advocate to let people know your story like you just shared with each other today? It's very important to do this so that we get noticed. And how can you do that? Well, there's several ways of doing that. Go to their website. Look at the toolkit. Also, join up with the GMID. You've heard about Global Meetings Industry Day. They scheduled the fourth annual, which is April 4th, 2019. Are you going to be celebrating that day? Or are you going to be putting an event together that day? Because there's so many people that have been involved in this. 35 countries, 175 organizations, over 260 events, thousands of advocacies out there. We need to get more involved. And you can do this all together. Because it's just a matter of fact. We can't change what goes on around us until we change what goes on within us. One loud, powerful voice. So take advantage of knowing more about what we need to do. This traffic and safety community did it. We can do it, too. We can do it, too. So I know some of you are probably thinking, okay, Deborah. <laughs> That stress is still there. Yes, there's going to be bumps along the way. There's going to be some things that are going to happen. I get it. You know, it's like what they call, you know, lather, stress, repeat, lather, stress, repeat. It, it's going to come there. But you have to continue. And one thing I can promise you about this industry, though, is that we continue to learn. We continue to learn. And we're never too young or too old to hustle at all. We have to just keep going and being resilient and not giving up and going after what you want in this industry so when you look back, you can really be proud, especially when someone says, what was that turning point? Because I know I can guarantee you one woman that actually did that within what she does. And just take a look and see what you see here. And not only did this woman receive her college education at the age of 76, a year later, she got her master's degree in leadership. And the beauty of this woman is that she's from our industry. She actually was the meeting professional for um, the uh, Billie Jean King and the World Team Tennis Organization. How do I know all that? That's my mother. And this is a very rare opportunity, but I want you to meet her today. My mother, who's accompanied by my dad, Ruth Ann Gardner, sitting in the back. Her motto is keep learning. You're never too young or too old to hustle. And what blessing do we have in this industry knowing that we can learn each and every day? So embrace it because this is how we're going to change the world is what we do day in and day out. So ask yourself this question. Are you willing to slow down, to speed up, and enjoy the ride? Because if so, it's going to, it's going to define you. It's going to renew you and it's going to empower you. Meeting professionals in the room, I want you to ask, what is it about your business, your meetings, your events that are worth hosting? And suppliers, why should your customers choose you over others? And for students in the room, why should we hire you in an industry where no one ever, ever, ever leaves? <laughs> and above all, a question for each and every one of you. And help me finish this line as the female version of the comedian Jeff Foxworthy. 
If you can't help but smile when you see our swimsuit model, Michael Lyons, on the cover of the Smart Meetings Magazine swimsuit issue, you might be a meeting professional, right? Thank you so much. Thank you for our lunch sponsor, Suzanne. Wonderful. Thank you very much.